Day two of pre-season testing in Bahrain. And this is when the secrets start to be revealed. With the real cars on a real track, there's no more hiding for a lot of F1 teams. And that means we get a close look at some really clever pieces of engineering. So let's dig deeper and take a look along the pit lane in Bahrain. And where else should you start than at the start of the alphabet? And that means the Alpine team and the French, English French team at least. Enstone's in England, but the team's French owned, of course, uh, owned by the Renault Group, Renault power unit in the back of the car, but an Alpine chassis. And the first thing we can just get a quick cheeky look at is the front suspension arrangement on the car. You quite often hear us talking about push rod versus pull rod front suspension, and you don't really get to see the gubbinsy bits in the front suspension at all. But actually what you can see here is that central element. And you can't really see it very clearly. You see this little circle here? That's the top of the torsion bar. Formula One cars don't have coil springs, they have torsion bars, which are a bit of metal that twists in a certain way to give the spring rate that the car needs. And then the damping's all split out into clever modes for different aerodynamic characteristics. But that central element is pretty common to all cars. And there you can see on the Alpine's push rod suspension. Now if you looked at, say, a Red Bull and looked at the same position, you wouldn't see those components because they're all buried down at the bottom of the front of the chassis and you can't see them because it's a pull rod and they're all based down low. And that's why we have push rod versus pull rod. But I want to carry on looking at the Alpine because there are some little secrets that have started to emerge about this very different French racing car. And this mechanic is just cleaning around the one that really caught my eye just in yesterday's session. And you can see it very clearly here. The side pod cooling ducts, now in the launch specification car, you could see it coming round very clearly, just like that. That's what you expect to see on one of the cars of this generation. But what we've seen appear at this test is this extension, this lower extension that comes right down, almost below the leading edge of the chassis. I think that's quite interesting because it's almost like one of those chin ducts that we saw in the previous generation of Formula One. You can also see just a small set of gauze covered I don't know what's behind it, but some sort of air filter to cover some of the components that this section is cooling. Because these side pod ducts don't just cool the big heat exchangers for the, the radiators, they're sometimes cooled for the power unit. But there's also electronic components that are also cooled in these, by these side pod ducts. And I wonder if that's what that's, that there is cooling. Uh, Alpine haven't let us take the car apart yet, so we're not able to take a really deep look at what the different bits are cooled yet, but we're going to. One question that came in from loads of people yesterday on the first day of the testing was well, what were the two little twinkling lights in the Ferrari side pod? Well, we talked about it in commentary a little bit, but I thought we'd have another look here, a little bit of a closer look down in the pits. Ferrari have always spent a lot of time and effort on thermal imaging to study the tyre characteristics and tyre performance on new cars, and not just the tyre temperature, but also the tyre shape. We used to see those headlights they used to run on the back of the car or the front of the car. That was looking at the bulge of the tyre. Well, this is a thermal imager, I believe, on the Ferrari side pod. And you can see it quite clearly that you've got this section here, but this strange coloured lens, that's a thermal imaging lens. And that camera is pointed forwards at the rear face of the front tyre on the new Ferrari. So they're just trying to understand that Ferrari front tyre performance because Ferrari had an issue with its tyres last year in that it was eating them like it was a very, very hungry Italian car. And that's exactly what it was. So they're trying to get away from that characteristic and make themselves more competitive over the season and open up their strategic options. And that all comes from mounting a little camera inside the side pod. Wouldn't have helped the cooling though. I do kind of wonder, is that car slightly overcooled to have that much cooling space taken out by a big old lump of camera? Be interesting to see if they change that during the season. Speaking of cooling, and cooling has been a big topic on the run into this season. Take a look at here at the nose of the McLaren. Now the McLaren is pretty conventional in this respect in that you have a big old hole in the front of the car. You can see it quite clearly there. Now that hole isn't for anything particularly complicated it's to keep the driver cold or keep him cool or able to drive the car in hot conditions. However, last season, most notably at the Qatar Grand Prix, a number of drivers, well, they fr quite frankly overheated. Logan Sargent nearly passed out driving the Williams and had to retire from the Grand Prix as a result. And to address that, the FIA have introduced a new little detailed regulation that allows every team to include a driver cooling scoop on the front of the chassis. Now the regulations state that you are allowed a single driver cooling scoop and it can be mounted on the top of the chassis and it'll just dump a lot of cold air in. Now, 
Originally, I think the idea was that you'd only be able to use the scoop in certain conditions. That seems to have gone away, and it looks like you're going to be able to use the, the scoop in any condition you want, as long as that's what you want to do. Now, let's take a look at what Mercedes are doing in, the, in terms of that driver cooling, because with those new rules, you are allowed that additional driver cooling scoop to make sure drivers don't overheat in those extremely hot temperatures. Have a look here. You can have a look at the nose of the Mercedes and you can see quite clearly on the nose tip that there isn't a little hole there. They've taken that off because, well, in these conditions, the Mercedes team clearly felt that they didn't need to use that. So they've had this additional scoop put on the top of the car. Now, these scoops are regulated in terms of their size and location. You can use them in addition to the hole on the tip of the nose or you can run one or the other. And it looks like in this situation, Mercedes has opted to use the scoop on the top of the nose, but not the one on the tip of the nose. Is it just about driver comfort? Don't be so naive. This is about aerodynamics. And you can see that as I play this clip forward, you can see the shape of the cooling inlet, but not just the cooling inlet, but also the bodywork around it. Have a look here. You can see on the Mercedes quite clearly that they've, um, they've got a little sort of, ramp leading back down and then you've got the 360 degree camera bulge just behind it so they're trying to i guess minimize the effect of that scoop minimize the drag of it because you've got a camera mounting just behind it which is on every single car so a nice little detail there on george russell's mercedes be interesting to see how often drivers adopt that and don't use it now let's compare what Mercedes are doing with their driver cooling ducts to what appear to be the driver cooling ducts on the Red Bull. And I said duct, plural, because Red Bull haven't got one in the tip of the nose, that's covered by a separate set of regulations. They do have a duct or ducts on at the top of the chassis in the position that everybody else does. Now have a look at these, a pair of little scoops, and I think that's a really interesting design, and I think other teams are gonna start exploring the Red Bull solution to see if that's a better way aerodynamically to cool their drivers down, or could you even get an overall aerodynamic gain out of using the scoops all year long? We haven't seen the Red Bull running without these scoops. We've seen a lot of cars not even running with the scoops at this point. So interesting piece of design. And if it looks a little bit familiar to you, cast your mind back to the old McLaren F duck. To me, it looks very, very similar. They were very, very different purpose. This has got nothing to do with stalling out your rear wing and get reducing drag. Well, staying on the topic of Red Bull, I thought we'd take a look at the car from behind. The first chance we get to have a look at that because it's been hidden ever since. And again, it's all about holes in the Red Bull, isn't it? We've seen those big holes at the front that we looked at yesterday that nobody expected to see. And once again, looking in these big gullies that, they, that Red Bull have copied from last year's early season Mercedes, we find again some stonking big holes. Have a look at this at the back of the cooling louvres. Red Bull have got giant gashes in the back of the bodywork behind those standard cooling louvres. And even those cooling louvres are quite significantly big. I mean, those are so big, you could go and do some spillology inside them. Study of caving, in case you're wanting to know. That is a big, big difference. But I guess with all of those slots and holes at the front of the car, all of that hot air's got to go somewhere and uh, it's all being ejected out of these two big old holes and all of these louvres across the rear bodywork. And that shape, of course, all designed to reduce the drag overall on the car. Pretty clever piece of design, much bigger than anything we saw on the Mercedes last year in that area. So I do wonder, has Honda done something a little bit clever with that power unit cooling? And now let's talk a little bit about power units. All of the power units in Formula One at present are completely frozen. You're not allowed to update them. You're not allowed to develop them unless you have a reliability issue. Well, with more races than ever on the Formula One calendar and the same number of power units available to each team, well, everybody needs to improve the reliability of their power units. Therefore, I suspect there's a huge amount of changes on every single power unit. And has Honda found something a little bit clever with the cooling layout? We'll just have to wait and see how this car evolves in this area. It could be just that it's a very, very hot day. And at high speed circuits, such as Saudi Arabia quite early in the calendar, you're gonna see all of this blanked off and the drag reduced as a result. But sticking with subjects of secrets, sometimes the secrets on a car are not revealed exactly in the way the team intend or exactly in an expected way. And sometimes the drivers reveal the secrets of the cars. And in this situation, 
Logan Sargent helped us see something on the Williams that we hadn't noticed previously. As he went off the track yesterday, having a little bit of a lurid spin, we got to have a nice look at the rear bodywork of this brand new Williams FW46. Just have a look here. We looked at the cooling louvres in the back of the Red Bull gullies. Well, have a look there. You can just about make it out. There's a couple of little cooling louvres in the gullies of the Williams. And that's actually something we haven't really seen before in these deeply gullied cars. A lot of them have their cooling louvres up on the engine cover. Williams have decided to do it lower down in the rear bodywork. And I think that's quite an interesting little piece of engineering. You can also see that that team were a little bit unhappy because their flow visualization run on their beam wings was interrupted by this moment for Florida Man. Now, if you think putting louvres in gullies is nothing new, well, it's not. Ferrari did that on the very first gullied car in 2022. But actually, in reality, with this deep gully design, this current spec of design, this is the first car to do it. And I wonder if you're going to see a lot of other teams up and down the pit lane copying that as a result of a driver revealing a few secrets of the modern racing car.